Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. In this video, we are going to be reviewing the match that we just witnessed between Australia and France. What a finish it was. We have got someone to my side who is very happy with that result as well. For the first time on this channel, we are going to have BKR Sport with us. The connection seems to be a little bit rough at times, but we have still got the audio, which we can we go are, uh, Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, man. I don't know what's going on here, but buddy, all we need to know here is that the Wallabies won, and the buddy, that's all we need to know, mate. Get around the Wallabies, and what, what a fantastic finish. Mm, tell you what, it looked like there were so many opportunities in that last five minutes for both sides to be able to kind of close out that game. Like the Wallabies, they just kept on having moments. That drop goal attempt originally from Lalicio that did go away to the side. Then they had that wide cross kick attempt for Paisami, then another kick in behind from Paisami, which I think surprised thing is that frustrated people. me. The thing that frustrated me with that, man, is that like we, we all we had to do realistically was to just finish out that game by just kind of phasing out for a penalty, which we got in the end. Because obviously mm. we saw that throughout that entire game, the penalties from France was just ridiculous. Like it was just ludicrous how many penalties they were giving away because they were a, a young France team, obviously. But I didn't understand why we were going for all those that, that field goal at, at that time. And I didn't understand why we were going for that kick on that second phase or whatever because it was just ridiculous at that point. Like all we have to do is get through phases get to a penalty, and then kick the three-pointer, which we obviously won by in the end by getting a penalty. Um, so, yeah, look, that was very frustrating. But overall, the game was very frustrating as a Wallabies fan, but I'll take the win either way. Mm, very close as well. I feel like that's one of those ones. I think going into this game, for a start, France were considered the favourite. But then, of course, with a few of the international players from overseas kind of being left out, it became that the Wallabies became that little bit of a favourite. But I think a lot of people still couldn't really decide like, no one saw either side running away with it. And it's one of those ones. I thought close. I thought we with the team list that France put out and the team list that we put out, I was assuming that we would have won that game by a lot more than we did. Now, mm. I think that the reason why, obviously, people thought France would be favourites is because, I, I, for, for me, I have them as the one of the favourites, if not the favourite, actually, for the 2023 World Cup. I genuinely yeah. believe this team is very young. They've got a massive depth, as we've just seen. Their depth is incredible. They've obviously got the home tournament in France. I genuinely believe this team will win the World Cup because I believe it's probably going to go to a Northern Hemisphere team for the first time in, since 2003, I think it was, when England beat Australia uh, in Australia for the World Cup there. Yes, I hate Johnny Wilkinson. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I can stay on the channel, but he makes me angry, that guy. But um, yeah, look, a, a, a win is a win. But yeah, I just think that I, I assumed that Australia would win by a lot more in that game because of the outs from the French team. But in the same sense, the French team that we looked at tonight was very similar to the team that we saw in the Autumn Nations Cup final against England, which should have won. Um, that was a very young team in that Autumn Nations Cup final against England, um, and that team should have beaten England. They didn't. Obviously, last seconds was an equaliser by England, and then obviously went to extra time, and, and the English won. But, uh, yeah, they they're obviously got a lot of depth, and I'm, I'm pretty nervous about them going into 2023, but I'll win as a win. <laughs> exactly right. And we have also got in there, bro, even I was frustrated watching the Wallabies GG to both teams, and that is coming from a Kiwi as well in the chat. And we have also got France do the chokey from Batman. Yeah, unfortunately the for them, all they needed was to just be able to claim that line out. Like it became a situation of no one wanted to be the guy who had that ball in hand right at the end, other than, of course, Tate McDermott, who decided, right, if you guys aren't getting it, I will. I'll just have this one and we'll just. 20 I don't faces think how they the did end. that. Like, I don't. I don't get how France even did that, dude. Like they had, they, they won the line out, and then just kept throwing the ball back further and further, and then there was no one there, and then the show just said, "Okay, thanks, man. <laughs> okay, we'll take it." Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting for that second matchup to see how they are going to be. That's on um, Tuesday, yeah. Playing the game. Yep, next Tuesday, and then I believe the that weekend it is going to be the game straight after New Zealand Fiji as well. So that's going to be a big I game. I thought New Fiji was on Saturday, Saturday, this Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, although we have the rematch next uh, oh, Saturday there's one as well. this Saturday and then next Saturday as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's going to be a big weekend of rugby as well. And, of course, the Rugby World Cup qualifiers for Samoa and Tonga coming up very soon as well, I, think I believe. This week. I think that's this weekend. I think that's on Sunday. I think that's yeah. on, uh, on Sunday, that game. But, um, yeah, look, I, I think that in regards to, like, obviously, this was the first game of both these teams, because obviously France have had a very long domestic season. So this was the first game for them, and, and this was our first game. We 
needed kind of something like a bit of a, like a shock for this. Obviously, yeah, we win the game, but I think we needed a bit of a shock to realize that, yes, this is our starting lineup, and yes, it's very young, but we're definitely not the finished product yet. I believe that people, especially Kiwis, no offense to you or all the Kiwis out there, but I, I believe that a lot of Kiwis out there didn't really understand the progress that Australia had made in the last Tri-Nations last year. I think that they didn't realize that we probably should have won that Tri-Nations. We missed two conversions or penalties at the siren against, I believe it was Argentina twice. Um, obviously, there was that one, I believe, in Wellington as well. Or was it was a Wellington, yeah, that we missed the, con- the penalty. That wasn't, that was a Blair's Lake Cup for the draw against the Kiwis. But then we go into that Tri-Nations and we missed... Reese Hod- um, Reese Hodge missed two conversions, yeah. two penalties, and that screwed us over. So I think that Australia made a lot more progress in the last Tri Nations than people give us credit for. And I was waiting to see a lot more progress in this game going forward. But obviously, this was the first game, so it's it's a decent start to win despite the adversity we faced going down fifteen zero early. But yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to work on, obviously. Because mm, I think the main thing as well throughout Super Rugby, Trans Tasman. And uh, Super Rugby AU, it's like those individual sides in Australia, like they've got a few of those uh, players who just stand out, like kind mm. of above the rest, and putting them all into a Wallaby side. Like I feel like people try and base it off the results of Super Rugby Trans Tasman, but putting them all together, I feel like is a dangerous combo. Like the likes of the loose forwards, you got Valentini Hooper and Harry Wilson. Like that is a very strong loose mm. forward trio and an exciting one. Like. Michael Hooper's try. What did you think of his, how he backed into it? To put that was odd. I've never really seen that before. I, it was kind of <laughs> like, yeah, he was just playing on France side and then just kind of said, you know what, I'm actually playing with the Wallabies here and just put the ball down. It was really strange. Yeah, it was something I've never seen before. I loved it. We'll take the seven points. <laughs> mm, we've got, um, that was atrocious, atrocious, atrocious rugby, yet entertaining rugby, the best. I would agree with that one. As well. I would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And also win is a win, but bad game overall from Heinrich. But at this stage, you know, looking at some of the stats that I've got, 66% possession for the Wallabies in this match, 75% territory. Like, it's one of those ones that France, like, they had a perfect start to the match, like getting those two early tries for Villiers. But then from there, it was those penalties that just kept on letting them down. How many like, penalties did they give away then? Was it like 15? I saw a little pop-up but it hasn't actually got it here, but I believe it was something along the lines of around that 15 or so. So to have I wanna, that many... I want to ask, ask you a question. What, what would you be your thought? Do you think that France played well, or do you think that the Wallabies allowed the France to be in that game from how poor I they think, were? Uh, it's a hard one. I think France, some of their players played very well, but overall, like I said someone before the game to look out for was Damien Pinot. I think he touched the ball maybe mm. once. If he was yeah. lucky out on that wing. So yeah. it's one of those ones like the loose forwards didn't do too bad for them. Like Geelong stepped up as the captain for them in that regard. If Dante hadn't given away so many offside penalties, like his tackling was going very well for him. And yeah. he should have been one of those I was expecting him to have keys. a good game tonight, Dante. I was expecting mm. him to be that killer guy for the, for the French. But yeah, unfortunately, just didn't quite go his way. In that regard, so I feel like the second game, like discipline's going to be huge for not just France, but then like the Wallabies. I think they gave away less than ten penalties, but then they had a few handling errors creep in. And- I don't understand how France didn't get a yellow card because they had about mm. eight penalties in a row on their own line, and the referee yeah. didn't even speak to him once. I don't think he spoke to him once. It was like eight penalties in a row. I couldn't understand how there was no sin being or yellow card. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I think they got extremely lucky with the timing because I think they got like that final warning and it was like that one that was only a few minutes out from half time. So I think it's one of those ones that, uh, I mean, I agree that they probably should have had a yellow, you know, yeah. somewhere in there possibly. Definitely for repeat infringements from Dante. Like he was offside about four times. Man, like, like on that, when, when we were lining up for that try, I don't even know if we got points from that. I don't even, we might've got points from it, but like we, it was just, penalty after penalty after penalty and I, I was sat there on my stream and I was just like why are we not getting a yellow why are they not getting a yellow card here it was just it was actually ridiculous at one point where it had been eight or nine in a row literally eight or nine and the the referee didn't even say nothing nothing it was it was ridiculous it was crazy mm. New Zealand referee unfortunately in that regards. oh that tells me everything I didn't know there we go yeah, there we, I didn't even realize who the referee was but that tells me everything we need to know now <laughs> <laughs> We've got crazy and it's the first time I've seen someone back up uh, to score a try as well. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. 
Maybe something. I didn't, I didn't even know if it was topic? allowed at the time. I didn't even. Please. I didn't even know it was allowed. Like at the time, I was like, "Is that a try? Like, are we are allowed to do that?" Or like... mm. it seems like it's a weird, like, kind of goosey guarding type. <laughs> like, yeah. you're not allowed to touch this ball. Like, and that's the thing. Like, trying to tackle a guy. This is going to sound strange, of course, but trying to tackle a guy from behind is a lot harder than tackling him kind of straight on in terms of stopping <laughs> that like slight little. Like yeah, of course. Rock grind. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I'm just picking a hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It was it was interesting, but it was a try in the end for Michael Hooper, of course, coming back into the Wallabies jersey. Yeah. Well, I, I want another thing that I noticed with Australia's game plan tonight is that I don't really believe we had a game plan uh, for with the Wallabies. <laughs> like, uh, did you notice that? Like, what what would be your take from our game plan tonight? Because our game plan, from my perspective, was every time we got the ball, we would kick it back to them. And I wouldn't really understand it because we would never really hold the ball. All we need to do is hold the ball at some stage and just get some possession and we'd get a penalty. Like, look at how many penalties mm. they gave away, 15. We hold that ball, we probably get a penalty to win that game much earlier instead of going for the random kick down the sideline. Like, yeah, look, if it, if it falls, it falls. But, like, in the same sense, it was a miracle play that we didn't need a miracle play with four minutes to go there from right in front and we kick it out over the sideline. Mm. Yeah, I feel like, because Territory, I think it was later in that first half, they kind of had a little switch that they decided, right, we're going to try that kicking game. But then they ended up kicking the ball out on the full. And I feel like, and Noel Alessio, I saw that kick that he did, and it was just pretty much a nothing kick straight to the French uh, player just outside oh, of that his was 22. horrific. That was and terrible. Was, like, I had no idea what the plan at that stage was going to be. But, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Like, because for when they dropped that back to Noel Alessio, the way that they were going, I think if they kept on – building up those phases that was in like the 70 70th minute or so i think it was if they yeah. just kept on building up and like they've got callaway out on the wing and i feel like he's one of those players who are very underrated like he was on debut but for the rebels like he has got a lot of pace like he chased down will jordan for pretty much the tackle that stopped the crusaders from making it to the super rugby trans tasman final with the way that he covered that one like he is i feel like he could be one who does get a little bit more attention in the future. So it's going to be one of those ones. Second game, do they go with, have they got Dalgunu in the squad or is he still out? I think injury? he's still out. I think he's still out with injury. Um, I'm mm. not too sure. Um, obviously, <laughs> Dalgunu last year was, was an interesting one as a Wallabies fan <laughs> because he was good against the All Blacks and then he was not good against the All Blacks. I know you obviously remember that. Um, that was the Blood Slow Cup, obviously, before we got to the Tri-Nations. That was when we were in New Zealand. Um, but, yeah, I think he's still out. I think he's still out for the uh, for the time being. But I've actually just seen a comment over there from Batman3434, and he says, the, f- the fact that France are missing Gal Ficou, Teddy Thomas, um, Mathieu Jalbert, um, Antoine Dupont, Gregory Aldrit, Charles Olivon, uh, Romain Tabak, Camille uh, Chat, and Vremi Vakatawa is scary. And that's absolutely terrifying. It is absolutely mm. terrifying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I believe they are the favourites for the World Cup. I've said this for years, though. I've said that for two years that I believe that France will be the favourites for the World Cup in 2023. Mm, definitely at home as well. Like, that home, hopefully we get crowds mm. by then. Like, that home field advantage, like, in a World Cup can just do, like, awesome mm. things. Because Japan, did they beat... The spring Japan, box no, that, no, 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 that wasn't in Japan. That was the one it. beforehand. <laughs> Japan beat Scotland to make the this the, the finals. No, Japan mm. progressed because they beat Scotland, which is a good beat uh, win anyway. But no, that South Africa game was in England. I think it was. Was it in? Mm. Was it in England? I think when that was the World Cup back then. I think so. Yeah, that was massive. That was. I think it was mm. even before that. Actually, I think it could have been like two thousand seven. No, two thousand eleven. Might have been 2011. I think it was 2011. Were we in New Zealand for that one? 2011. No, nah, it wouldn't have been New Zealand. No? 2015, mate. No, it would have been before that. <laughs> when was it? Can someone, Cup the, knowledge. Mine's gone can out someone in the chat let us know when that Japan versus South Africa game was? Because it wouldn't have been in New Zealand. It probably was the one in 2015. No, could, I don't know. 2015, probably, actually. It probably would have been 2015. Yeah, it was. Mm. Curious Shores said 2015. So, um, yeah, that was. That was unbelievable. But yeah, home, home ground advantage is, is massive. But in the same sense, I've been saying for a while now as well that I believe that <laughs> I still believe that South Africa, New Zealand, and I think the Wallabies will be good by 2023. I still believe that, yes, I, I, I think England's falling apart, to be honest with you. I think England will be falling apart over the next couple of years too. So I, I don't think they'll be as good as everyone is expecting to be. So I really think it'll be between France, New Zealand, South Africa, and potentially Australia. Hmm. And we have also got earlier in the chat, I did see as well, who would you give your man of the match to? 
in this one? Uh, I'll go with you first because he did ask you, so we'll go with you first. Because uh, um, <laughs> <well, laughs> there's the no great that, deal of players who were fantastic in this game. I mean, if he had continued it, I would have said Villiers just because, I mean, those two early tries, like, he was very impressive and he also had a moment a little bit later on in that first half as well. But then after that, he kind of went quiet for, like, pretty much the whole of the second half. So, but then I guess Wallabies won it, so you possibly look at one of their players for that one. And then I don't know if there were any huge There wasn't stand-ups. really. I would say I the know. players that kind of looked decent enough to be called in this was, I think Maruka Kotobeti was, was decent enough with some of his ball running that was really yeah. quality. Obviously, he didn't score a try or anything like that. And he's not a massive ball player. He's that finishing product. But I thought Maruka Kotobeti was very good there. Um, I didn't really see a great deal of Hooper, unfortunately. I didn't see Hooper doing a great deal as much of what I would expect as a captain. Obviously, yeah, he did score that try, but I thought Taniel Tupo, when he came on, was fantastic, as per usual. Yeah. Taniel Tupo was that super super sub. was just unbelievable. Uh, you know, unless you're not really... Uh, I, I don't know. It's difficult because a lot of the Australians... We should have won that game by more. We ended up winning the game, but we yeah, we still struggled. So I would, I would personally, I really liked what Marika Kotobeti brought to the game. I did. I thought uh, did, Tate McDermott did. Uh, well, what did Tate McDermott do? Like he did a couple of things. He wasn't outstanding. Mm. He wasn't outstanding, but he did play the ball pretty well, I guess. But it was it was difficult because you know what? We didn't even obviously see um, Vunavalu. We didn't even see Vunavalu in that game. Hmm. Yeah, because that's one thing. As well, I feel like it's a hard one. Like, even looking at the bench, I knew straight away looking at, like, the reserves for that front row, like Angus Bell and Taniela Tupo, like, mm. that was always going to be a struggle for France. But then that battle between James Slipper and Demba Bumba was actually, I felt like the scrums just, neither side could really get set in a scrum. Like, it was not too many scrums actually ended up, I guess, working. There was always either that free kick or a scrum reset first that just ended up, kind of breaking up. I feel like Geelong probably, I'd say he had had an overall decent game for France. Yeah, look at like, I think that France were just so ill. I, I think that it's diff, it's difficult to give good ratings for France because they were so ill-disciplined and they didn't have a great yeah. deal of the ball. They didn't have a great deal of the ball to actually do stuff with. The only time they had the ball was when Australia would give them the ball and they would gift them it and it would make no sense. It, it would make no sense why they kicked the ball back to them, but they did it every single time. They would just kick the ball back to them. So um, for me, yeah, look, there, there wasn't a great deal of, of man-of-the-match kind of players, but for the... Way that he would run the ball back and actually give it a crack, I would, I would, I, I thought Tate McDermott wasn't terrible, but I would definitely say Monica Godabetti was one of the guys that I was really looking to towards in regards to actually intensity wise, I guess. Yeah, because mm, he was kind of like other than him, like Tom Wright, we didn't really see, unfortunately. Paisami, yeah. he had a couple early runs. And early then, runs. I'm not yeah. sure why they said right. You're the one who's kicking the ball, mate. Like you are <laughs> the one who's going for the cross kick. You're the one who's like putting it in yeah. behind. But, like, because, I mean, that's the thing. He had Tamua next to him, like, in the centre. Tamua didn't really do much like, today. Yeah, if you were going to give someone the ball to put on the boot, I feel like out of those two, it would be probably Tamua. But then, yeah, uh, yeah Cor and Betty. Like, the way that he just, like, even if he's, like, out on the wing, like, the next phase, he's just next to the ruck going, oh, I might be able to sneak this one round the side like he uses his like size to his advantage and kind of plays it like a forward just round the side of that ruck like any chance that he gets as well which yeah. like it's going to be interesting he's only scored the one try in trans tasman and super rugby au but i mentioned that once he scored that try for the rebels i feel like the floodgates are going to be opening up for him and yeah like try na- or not try nations rugby championship gives, of yeah, course it gives us all over game mm. Springboks versus Wallabies is going to be one that I'm sure you will be looking forward to. Um, kind of. <laughs> we we just struggled against the French C squad or B squad, so I can't. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Obviously, I want to see what we are, where we're at. But Batman thirty four thirty four said something before. Said he, I think that South Africa and France will be the faves. New Zealand won't. Uh, the days of Macora over. Argentina are a good bet. Wales and Aussie will be dark horses. Just to analyze that a little bit further, I think that New Zealand will always be one of the favourites for a World Cup because of the fact that there is so much investment and so much support behind that that team every single year. Because obviously, the rugby is the main sport in New Zealand, right? I'm Wallabies. I'm Australia. We don't have any investment, so. 
it will be finding it difficult for us to compete because obviously we don't really I get care. I'm one of the true Wallabies fans, but obviously there's a lot of Wallabies fans who just don't care anymore um, because of how much we've struggled for the last 20 years so um, in regards to New Zealand they'll always be up there we have to really fight and grind to be up there South Africa obviously will be France obviously will be Argentina I disagree with Um, I don't think that Argentina will be anywhere near as good as you believe in 2023 I think that Argentina will struggle based on the fact that they don't have a super rugby team anymore and yes their players are now playing in what France and whatnot but the point of the matter is is that they don't have that solid core of the um, the Jaguares to to really connect with their, their team together. And then Wales, I think Wales, yeah, look, they had a good year, but just last year, everyone was talking about how bad they were. You know, just last year, everyone was talking about how bad they were when they were playing in the Autumn Nations Cup. And then now, obviously, yeah, they have one good tournament in the Six Nations and everyone's talking about them again. So uh, I don't think Wales will be as good as you believe, but in the same sense, yeah, I, I think that the main question mark there is is definitely don't not rate the, the All Blacks. They just won 102 nil. I know it was against Tonga, and as a Wallabies fan, I sat there and I thought, well, look, it's Tonga. It's 102 nil. Any time you score 102 nil, that's unbelievable. But it was also Tonga. You know what I'm saying? Like, So I want to see New Zealand go up against – even Fiji's a good test. Like Fiji's – I noticed that Fiji paying like $41 to win or some shit. Like $41 really? to win. Yes. Oh, it was ridiculous. I think my mate Clarky, you know, Clarky's rugby league Carmel, he, he messaged me because he's, he's moldy. So he messaged me saying like, um, oh, all we're going to win. And I was like, there's no way that – Fiji deserves to be that kind of price. I don't know if it was mm. like fourteen dollars or forty-one dollars, something like that, but it was ridiculous. And yeah. uh, I think that it's a good test for New Zealand this week, actually, against the Fijians. But I still think they'll win. But I don't know about it being like a dollar two worthy. Because <laughs> mm, I saw that before the match started against Tonga, it was actually a hundred and one dollars for Tonga to win here on the TAV. Like, hundred and one to one. Yeah, it was completely. Wow. Which I guess was almost the scoreline in the end, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah. Enough. Fair, <laughs> fair enough, then. Fair enough pricing, to be honest with you. Mm. We have also got, I want to see more of Harry Wilson in the chat from Curious George as well. He's one of those players that, like, in that game against the Crusaders, it, like, for the Reds, he just played extremely well. And I feel like as soon as you give him space, like, the scrum wasn't really working out for either side. But if you get that base of the scrum right, like, off the back, he can make you a lot of metres in a hurry. Like, oh, in a hurry, you could say no. It's 12.30 oh on that one. Oh, but, um, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we will move on. But um, uh, Aussie uh, Dark Horses as well, I do see in the chat. Rueb's Black is actually laughing at that, I believe. And I'm going to comment. I'm going to reply to this comment because I believe Rueb's Black is laughing at Aussie Dark Horses because they then followed up by saying Wallabies played terrible. The Wallabies did play terrible. But what you've got to understand is that the World Cup is, two, two, is still two years away. It's still two years away. So we've still got a long way between drinks. And this team is still very young. You know, you actually, look, if we can get a better halfback in my life, we can start improving our our kicking game. Um, That was the first game of the international rugby season for the Wallabies. Uh, Yes, obviously, in Super Rugby, we struggled, but that was the first game. You know, you've got to give it time. Uh, I, I looked at for us to play... I look for us to play the All Blacks all the time because, look, as much as we get beaten, I still think that's a good test for us because obviously that shows us where we actually are on the big scale because playing that France team just then wasn't showing us anything because that was the first game of the season. There's a long way to go, right? But there's no way you can't say that Australia in 2023 won't have a much more aligned team than where they're at right now. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, two years is a long time. A lot can change in that time as well. Like, we have got... That situation of even for the All Blacks, like we've got a few young players who are now just making their debut, like the likes of Ethan DeGroote. A lot of people are saying he is going to be like a massive name, possibly in that World Cup. So, you know, those young guys coming through could be, you know, like even France, like looking at this side here, like a lot of these guys will be going to the World Cup and they will probably continue to improve leading up to the World Cup as well, which is why. They're going to be dangerous. We've also got Shadow Ninja Ghost. They said, who's BK for? He is the man. He he says that, but I know that he comments on all my streams. So I don't know why he's saying that, because I see him commenting on all my streams. Like, what is he talking about? (laughs) Maybe Um, he wants me to give a good description, perhaps. But for anyone who doesn't know, rugby league is this man's, I guess you could say main sport, but he follows all sport, of course. It's main sport. Well, I guess I've put all the posters here that are rugby league and stuff like that. But Mm. um, yeah, Yeah. obviously, I do a lot of rugby league. Your posters, aren't they? 
Yeah, I'm I create wrong. all these. Yeah, yeah. This is no. the best one, though. I don't know if anyone watches the league, but uh, that's the best one. Broncos have <laughs> twenty wins. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's not harsh because if they won it again this year, I'd be doing a spoon there, and I'd be doing a spoon there as well. Gee whiz, I'd love that. <laughs> um, uh, Xavier Browning says Matt Miller didn't play that well. It was a bit disappointing. I agree. I don't think it was that good. Mm. Do you prefer him at twelve or ten? Um. <laughs> I would, pr- I'd, prob- I'd probably, I don't know. I, d- I, I really don't know because I, I think that Tamua, I think that Tamua is, uh, is he going to be the future of Australia? That's my question. You know, I think he's good, but in the same sense, he hasn't really done a great deal. Like, he will be the future of Australia, but he hasn't really done a great deal for the world where he's since playing for us. And that's not just this year, I'm talking about in general. Um, mm. Obviously, he's still quite young, but. Uh, give him time, but it's not like I'd probably go. Tw- I'd probably go to ten. I'd probably go to ten in preference. But in the same sense, we do have a couple of roles for that ten at the moment. Mm, that is true. A couple injuries as well, because I believe Jordan Pataya should be relatively close to coming back. So I feel like that centre maybe would you switch Paisami to twelve Pataya on his outside at thirteen, or is there someone else in that centre combo that you'd add in there? No, I'd probably leave. Uh, look, I, I think that the way that Australia should go right now is 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 build through utilising the same players in the same positions. I think yeah. that we really need to just build a core right now. Um, it's really about kind of just getting consistency because for the last twenty years we've been changing teams left, right, and centre. You know, we've been changing players left, right, and centre in key positions. When you're changing that ten position so um, uh, consistently, and you're changing that twelve position, and you're changing all those main positions, it's like. In general, with Super Rugby, if you're changing your main key players and, and moving them around and, and swapping them out because you feel like you want to just kind of get a new feel and see if something else works better, then it's going to really uh, kind of have that domino effect on the rest of the entire team. So I feel like just just kind of stick with the same team and, and, and move forward. Whether whether or not we just struggle in this game, it doesn't necessarily mean it. On on Tuesday, it's going to be um, on Tuesday. It's going to be the exact same. I feel like that on Tuesday we'll beat France by even more. Okay, right, maybe. I feel like, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. My prediction before the game was actually, or halfway through the game, I think it was when the Wallabies were 15 nil down or somewhere early. I actually said Wallabies by 10, 10 minutes. Which I was pretty worried about when I did say that it was going to be like the Wallabies winning it. But from those penalties, they just kept on like 75% territory as well, 34% possession for France, only having 32% in that second half. Like it's very hard to score a lot of points in a hurry in that regard, although I have seen a comment as well. I will put it up. On the screen for you as well. Lex Axel has said, just grab Josh Addo <laughs> yeah. and boom, Wallabies was sort of the top. Well, they already <laughs> obviously got that they, one. They already obviously took Buddy Maraca Cotabetti. So, <laughs> you know, in regards to the NRL, but Josh Adokar, obviously, yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. Uh, but in the same sense, like Adokar is a bit too small body for Rubber Union. Mm-hmm. I had a comment on my stream today asking, like, comparing. Australian rugby league players and putting them into rugby union and saying the Kangaroos would beat the All Blacks and I disagree because I think the All Blacks team is just so the way rugby union players are built like Mike Cotabetti is a very fast built player tall strong not tall but strong player Joshua Carr is very thin uh, he's not really a beastie kind of player and you need those real thick legs and that thick body to, to, to really be successful and that's why Sully Asi Vinavalu could do well in Union because he's a bigger bodied winger. Adokar is, is a lot thinner. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I would I would mm. probably disagree in regards to bringing Josh Adokar, but in the same sense, I guess they just saying because he's very fast and, and might be able to speed around the players, but I don't think that he would work in, in Union, no. What about Trevojevic? Trevojevic? Um, that's a good question. I would say probably, yeah. I think Trevojevic could probably work. I think that the reason why Trevojevic would work is because he's a bit of a stronger player, but in the same sense, he gets injured quite a lot. So you could argue mm-hmm. that he goes into a, a more physical, tough game. Now, look, I think that league, you need a lot more fitness because you're obviously continuously running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every single tackle. But I think that in regards to Union, you need to have that tougher body because the hits probably are... Stronger and obviously that lot, lot of that ruck work and that scrum work. Look, I think that he'd work, but in the same sense, he'd be very similar to a Sam. Geez, I don't even know who I'd, I'd compare him to in rugby, to be honest with you. But he'd he'd be good. He'll be good mm. at any sport he plays, realistically. Mm. And we have also got in there earlier on as well. I did see that Tamua is not good in defence. He cannot tackle, as us says Brendan. And that's the thing. I think before the match, everyone was saying Noel Alessio and like Tamua, they're going to be targeted by Don T, just purely because of that fast-paced running and the solidness of that individual. But he didn't really 
get too many chances overall, uh, Dante, to be able to run with that ball. But I guess that does happen when you only have 34% of possession in 18 minutes. Oh, Australia dominated the possession, but they just did nothing with the possession. Mm. And we have also got in there as well, why didn't Hodge play? Uh, we needed him. We needed O'Connor. I believe O'Connor is injured. And I think injured. Hodge, is Hodge the same? Hodge is injured. But in the same sense, <laughs> Hodge, Hodge is someone that I can... I'm still trying to forgive for last year because he cost us three games last year. He cost us three games last year. And I will still... Yeah. I said this at the beginning of this, this stream. where He cost us the game against New Zealand in Wellington. He cost us the, the game against Argentina in Sydney. And also he cost us the game against Argentina in... I can't remember the other where it was, but he cost us three games there with three missed kicks. So I'm still trying to forgive him. But yeah, mm. James O'Connor has is injured. So that's why he wasn't playing. He was a commentary or not, I believe, on Stan. Yeah, they have yeah. quite a few connections, it seems. For saying I saw, of course, Michael Checker was on yeah. the commentary booth. Uh, was he tonight as well as? Well, Stan Super is rugby obviously the main. Stan is the main uh, sponsor now uh, for mm. rugby in Australia. I don't know if it's like the same thing in New Zealand. I'm not too sure. Mm. Or we're still with Sky. Although I know that it was, I think Stan who ended up striking one of our first Super Rugby AU ones. So thank you, Stan. Stan struck, struck you down. Did you obviously get off that strike yeah. there? Yeah, luckily just before Super Rugby at that hour. But I think just anything with Super Rugby AU and the title was just gone off YouTube. Like yeah, fair enough. a lot of channels. They stopped. Yeah. They stopped striking down my streams because I kept like emailing them saying like, "Don't you do this shit to me? Don't you, you know, like, don't you do this?" Because I stream every single day. I do like baseball. I do rugby league. I do rugby union. I do everything right. So if I get struck yeah. down, I can't stream at all. And I'm just like, I start freaking out. Start. I'm going to email everyone. I'm going to call everyone. I'm going to get onto it today. And yeah, I think they've stopped doing that now because of that reason. Because mm, that's the thing, like YouTube strike system, like you can understand it in some regards, but then for ones that like get wrongly strike, that's three months if you like don't get like a response back, that's three months that you can't like live stream anything. Yeah. Like, I know. Which is that wouldn't like it wouldn't kill my channel. I just do different videos, but in the same sense, it would be yeah, incredibly frustrating. Um, but I saw a couple of comments here. One person saying that Australia will get beaten on Tuesday, and one comment saying that um, the show will easily win on 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 Tuesday, uh, <laughs> I would say I, I feel like, and I, I'm i a realistic Wallabies fan. Like I'll tell you, we've been terrible for 20 years, right? We're terrible, 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 terrible. And I, I'm always here saying this on my streams and whatnot. I'm always saying we just don't know how to win because we don't have the investment because Australian rugby drove us into the ground for two decades, yeah? But I'm realistic in my thoughts. And I think that we really easily win this game against France on Tuesday because I think that this game really proved that even though we didn't play well, we were still able to overcome that adversity, which is something that we haven't been able to do for, I'd probably say, six, seven years now since probably the 2015 World Cup is when we were at probably at last at our best when we made the World Cup final against you guys. Um, we haven't been able to overcome that kind of adversity, i.e. Argentina twice last year, i.e. Auckland, uh, the game in Wellington against you guys. You know, we just haven't been able to overcome that adversity. And today, we did. We were able to do that. And I've seen the comment from Tesla, the Aussie lad talking facts. <laughs> <laughs> the Aussie lad. May as well change my channel from BKR Sport to the Aussie lad, eh? Oh, How about that? Keep the lad on the Aussie lad. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, we've also we got in the chat as well. Um, I saw it earlier on about why didn't O'Connor play as well. It is because he is injured, unfortunately, for him. Okay, uh, let's take some bets. Hundred dollars on France to win next week as well. Says Ruth Black. I don't know whether we're allowed to gamble in the chat. Nah, man. So the thing is, man, is that I've done this before. Like I've had bets with my people on my stream. I literally take bets all the time, but people don't pay up, so I don't do this mm. anymore. I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm not listening because they expect me to pay up. But when when they lose, I don't think anyone's ever done it. So I'm just like, nah, mm. I'm not. I mean, like you, I yeah. had. I had a donation or I had a so-called donation that was like, if you crack an egg on your head, I'll give you such and such amount. You and get then, them to donate first and then you do it, bro. Yep. I, I had a do donation it. from one of our regulars as well, which was kind of like what made me do it. And then I did it and then they're like, oh, I'm not allowed to donate. And I was like, oh, I'm covered in egg. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Thank you. We, uh, now I'm literally drenched in egg and uh, you're a flog. Thanks for that. And that, was, that was at half time as well. I had to sit through the second oh, half geez. and a game geez. after, which was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's some dudes all the time, they're like, oh, donate a K if you do this. I'm like, yeah, okay, do it, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally say it like that. Like, go on, go on, man. You do it, I'll do it. I, I honestly will too. Like, you do it, I'll do it. But like, no, I don't mm. believe 
nothing until it actually happens. Um, David Davis says, hey, boys, I was at the game when the All Blacks lost to the Wallabies at the cake tin when the great Sir John Eels nailed a penalty kick. That was in 99. I still haven't recovered. Man, <laughs> 99, that was a time that Australia actually wasn't terrible. I don't I don't know if I can swear on the channel, man, so I'm trying to, like, rephrase the words that no, I said. Right. Um, <laughs> but, like, yeah, t- that was around the same time that we last won the Blood Slow. What was the last time we won the Blood Slow? 2001? I think we need to do another one of these kind of like conversations after each Blood Slow Cup match, mate, because mm. uh, that'd yeah, be yeah. interesting. That'd be interesting. Mm. Definitely with the Kiwi and Wallaby side of it. I mean, I've got a giant inflatable all black here. Who is, well, I'm wearing a black Karen. shirt. He's, he's the mascot of the channel. You're on it. Oh, no, he's got I have seen that for ages. I think you, you've always had that, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, we won it in a wheat bix thingy. They were like, if you buy two bags of wheat bix, we might give you a giant inflatable all black. And I was like, yeah, okay. And right. because we're from a small town, easy win. Also, yeah. have a new one, which is Ian Foster on a stick. But that's for a different day. <laughs> but <laughs> how, how do you how do you think about Rennie actually? Because I know that obviously a lot of the All Blacks fans wanted Rennie originally, um, but obviously he went to the mm. Wallabies. What, what's your thoughts about Rennie and um, at the Wallabies? It's an interesting one. I feel like people from New Zealand want the Wallabies to win because of Dave Rennie because it's like coached by a Kiwi because I know at the moment there's that big debate of whether it's this man or uh, Scott Robertson like unless they win the rugby championship this man might get the I was going to biff him somewhere but <laughs> at the stage yeah. you know, he might get possibly thrown out but Dave Rennie overall I feel like he is going to be like surely he's still going to be around at the World Cup, isn't he? I feel like he's going in the right direction. No, definitely he'll be there for the World Cup, absolutely. It doesn't matter how many games he loses this year, he'll be at the World Cup in 2023. Mm. As long as we so, show some form of progression. Hello. <laughs> Look at said hello oh. <laughs> as well. He is a rugby supporter and a half. He likes the Chiefs. He's actually sat on me for pretty much every Chiefs live stream. Yeah, Chiefs mana, baby. <laughs> Chief mana. I'm a Chiefs fan in mm. Aotearoa. Obviously, I'm a, oh, well, I'm a Fiji and Drua fan because obviously we become, we'll be coming into the competition next year. Mm, um, that is true. Because Toso Viti, Fiji will be coming in and obviously go Fiji on uh, Saturday. We've actually got a comment here from Neville Sin saying, do you think Fiji has a chance against the All Blacks? Mate, Toso Viti. Fiji always has a chance against everyone because Viti, Viti power, baby, Viti power. Uh, but no, no, Fiji don't have a chance to win. But they'll they'll be within. Look, I think the odds are ridiculous. We were speaking about this before the stream. I think the ridic- the odds are stupid. Like it's like forty one to one for Fiji to win. I think it should be like, I think like twelve to one or something like that, which is still significantly in New Zealand's favour. They should still win by 20, 30, maybe even I'd say thirty m- minimum. But I think the Fiji are better than that 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 odds suggest. Yeah, because we also got in the chat a little bit earlier on from Aiden. Who's your friend, Hamish? It is BKR Sport. Unless you mean Kieran or Ian Foster on a stick, of course. But this one next to me All is Rick, BKR Sport. He does similar content. He did the game between Australia and France as well. And what I am quickly doing, I did see in the chat that someone was asking what your YouTube is. So what I am going to be doing is I am going to be putting it as a link. The pin comment in the chat is going to be the link. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see the stream from the Australia France game because we had a lot of internet troubles. We did stream the whole game, uh, but like we, we the the actual video from that Australia France game will not be up because we had. I don't know <laughs> if you guys are still getting internet problems here, but for yeah. some reason, something was it was just shocking all game. So, um, but yeah, obviously, we will be streaming. We stream all the time, but then again, we stream when you stream, you know. But then again, you're obviously all Blacks perspective. I'm a Wallabies perspective. Sometimes you can just get the mixture going, and there you go. Mm. Couple tabs open, perhaps get a bit yeah. of both. Mr. Batman thirty four thirty four says, "Immortals, you're a cocky All Blacks fan who lives." Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I didn't even realize pretty, what I started reading. Much, uh, yeah, Batman doesn't really like the All Blacks lately, and he, like, who is he support? Is he a Wallabies fan, or is, is he's he Wallabies? actually from Wales? So when you say Wales, will Wales. Like, go downhill. I feel like that might have <laughs> not been oh. ideal there. But um, I'm not yeah, an All Blacks like, fan, though, Batman. So you, yeah, it's <laughs> for BKR Sports YouTube channel. Be sure to check him out. He does all of the NRL games as well has been following that competition very closely. Also, a little bit of the boxing as well, if you guys yeah. are keen on a bit oh, of that. We're doing the Conor McGregor versus Poirier fight on, on Sunday, which should be pretty pretty good. Are you, do you watch UFC or MMA or anything like that? I normally, like up till doing like rugby commentary, I did. And then I always try and squeeze it in, but I always end up kind of missing out a little bit it's in terms difficult. of that. But I think I will be buying that one to be able yeah. to watch it because that should be a very good fight. Between those two, and of course, when it's the trilogy, like you know, it's well, you you think it's going to be the last one. We have to wait and see, of course. But the trilogy, like it's going to be an interesting one. And we all. Oh yeah, well, I think McGregor. Oh, sorry, McGregor wins. Oh, 
Okay. Prediction right there. What round and how? Uh, I think round two. I think McGregor stops him early. I think I think McGregor's better for this third this third um, this third one. I think that he'll come back and he'll uh, obviously want to try and make his way back to the top. But um, yeah, I think obviously I'll be streaming that one on Sunday, so I'm looking forward to that one. I'll be streaming all the card too. I'm looking forward to it. It should be, it's actually a pretty good card. One of my uh, good friends, Maxi Griffin, um, Max Griffin, I actually had on my podcast one time. He'll be actually in the fight, so uh, he'll be in the undercard against. I can't remember who he's fighting, but yeah, I'm obviously getting around my boy. Doesn't matter. He's winning. Doesn't matter Absolutely. who he's up against. <laughs> Absolutely. We have also got, um, I know him, I subscribe to him already, says uh, Shadow Ninja Ghost, and also we have got two easy stuff to him. I can listen to you guys all night, as well, says Tesla. And yeah, I hope this is something that we will do a little bit more man, often, I'm, perhaps. I'm keen. I think this would be actually good for post-rugby union. Like, I'm happy to do this, man. I think it's, um, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm happy to do this more. If Obviously, you're keen. Mm, I've almost, never done anything like this before. It's like a podcast. Slightly, like. Yeah, I was going to say, it's almost a podcast at this stage. And we're just mm. kind of chilling out, talking rugby. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun as well. We also, also got in the chat still a bit of back and forth between Batman and also... Um, <laughs> He's Batman, guys. Going on. He's losing his mind. <laughs> we have got BK. What's your predictions for the Sharks and the British and Irish Lions? Um... Uh, when is that? That is going to be at. It must be three a.m. Australian time, I think. If I'm not wrong, Wait, tonight. is that tonight? Yeah. Huh? Hold on. I think so. Sharks versus because I know the Springboks George has been cancelled, and also the Bulls versus British uh, and Irish Lions has been postponed. That's so been postponed. Jeez, I'm not sure. I didn't even. I haven't even. Yeah, there should. It should be. Should be British and mm. Irish Lions. Um, well, I'm going to back them in. They obviously had a relatively, it was relatively close there against Japan, uh, that 28 10 there. Mm. Um, I'm going to back them in, though, because obviously I'm, I'm going to say that they, they, they win by a decent amount. You know, I'll go. What's your prediction? I'm going to say British and Irish Lions to win probably 40 to 10. How about that? Mm. Okay, right. So it's weird. Because I play a little bit of rugby challenge. Yep. And last week I played this matchup, or I played the matchup between the Emirates Lions and the British and Irish Lions. And it was only seven points off what the real match score was. Okay. So, but this time when I played it, it was a lot closer. It was 28 to the British and Irish Lions, 21 to the Sharks. So I feel like that's, that's a close game. That could be a little bit too close, you know, because I did. I mean, I scored that's all the tries for the British and Irish Lions in the first, like, 20 minutes and then switched. <laughs> so. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, I haven't really been keeping a great deal up with the British and Irish Lions. I did watch that game against Japan, but um, I'll yeah, I'll back them in for a solid win. If they, they, they should be winning that quite significantly. Obviously, they beat the Lions quite significantly as well. So, I'll, I'll, I'll back them in. I'll, I'll back them in for yeah. a significant win there. Okay. So, I'm going to go British and Irish Lions by 17. It's going to be okay. Magic yeah, so 40, number. 40, 42, 10. Well, 40 to 10. So I've gone 30. You've gone 70. It's not too far off the difference. Mm. This is when we see the big upset and the Sharks manage to get the win. And I've done that so many times. I've ended up trying to predict things and my predictions are actually like they're dreadful. Like that's why I always stay on the fence because like I can't predict anything. It's tough. To yeah. Oh man, that's why I don't do NRL tipping videos anymore because it's just stupid. <laughs> like it's just ridiculous. Like because obviously mm. rando teams will get up and then people are like, oh, you tip this team. You suck. I'm just like, oh, cool, man. Like go, go and create your own YouTube channel, man. Like you, you <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> Um, but uh, I saw a comment here saying the Springboks look uh, spring box look unprepared. I'm actually really excited to see how the Springboks go because obviously we haven't really seen rugby from them in a long time. Uh, we haven't seen... When was the last time we really saw rugby from them? World Cup? Yeah, World Cup I final. I think the World Cup was the, the, yeah, the World Cup final. I don't think we've seen a game since then, have we? Have they yeah. played recently? Uh, very recently, Georgia was their recent one, but then this one that they were going to be playing up against Georgia got cancelled now. So they've just had the one. And which how I think much they they won. I didn't see that. Oh, I think it was around 40 points to maybe around that 10, kind of similar to... 40 to 10? Jeez, Georgia like, shouldn't be scoring then, 10 points against South Africa. Yeah. Oh, it might have even been Georgia's 17. Did they get 17? They actually... I think Georgia had a pretty decent showing in that first half, and then it was just the Springboks running away with it a little bit at the end. It should, but um, I'm like I, like I was saying, like I'm nervous about how the Springboks go forward because with the Springboks, you know, they're a team that... Uh, obviously phenomenal. They deserve it to be number one in the world series uh, on the world rugby rankings right now. However, I think that 
we haven't seen them play for a year and a half. It's very difficult for everyone to be saying like South Africa is still the best team when we haven't seen them play for a year and a half, just like the Wallabies. Before, obviously last year we saw them in a few games, which is different, but we still haven't really seen a great deal from any of these teams because they've played such a limited amount of games. We only saw the Tri-Nations last year. Usually you would see Australia, New Zealand, Argentina and that all play like you know, 20 damn well games. You know, they play teams in Europe. They play teams all over the place. You know, we're meant to play Japan at some stage. Japan haven't played Jack. That was their first game against the British and Irish Lions in about, since the mm. World Cup. That was their first game against the, the British and Irish Lions since the World Cup. And they only lost by 18 points. So uh, it's very difficult to get a read of these teams right now who haven't had a lot of games because of the pandemic, obviously. Mm, and we've also got in the uh, comments a little bit earlier on. I'm enjoying this podcast, says Smithy, as well. And also, Rube says, said, people complain about the All Blacks not playing a Pacific Nations team. Then wind and cry when the AVs, uh, AVs give them a thrashing, as well, is that comment there. Wait, where's this comment? Where, uh, what was this? A little bit earlier on, it is at Rube's. I can put oh, it up I on brought, the screen if you want. Yeah, put it up on the screen. So I want to say that again. I didn't actually get to hear what you said. People complain right. about the All Blacks not playing Pacific Nations team, then winch and crow on the All Blacks give them a thrashing. Oh, but come on, man. It's against Tonga, man. <laughs> like, play Fiji and win 102 0 and then start talking. You know what I mean? Like, it's against Tonga. <laughs> like, even Samoa. Like, you know, you play if you beat Fiji 102 0, I'll give you the credit. Because Fiji are a mm. decent team. Fiji are underrated. Fiji aren't going to win the World Cup, but Fiji are a top tier team. They are the best island on the team, besides, obviously, the All Blacks. You know, tell me a team that's better than the Fijians in. in uh, um, in, in the islands because it's not Samoa and Tonga and it's definitely not the Cook Islands or buddy American Samoa so uh, you know Fiji are a good team if you guys beat 100 if you guys beat Fiji 102 nil, I'll give you the credit you deserve but I'm not looking at a game against buddy Tonga you may as well play me and buddy the Kiwi Black and we may as well get a couple other YouTubers and chuck them out there and that's as good as putting put the Tonga team out there because Tonga they have no funding they're a rugby league nation they couldn't care less really about this obviously they, they would have loved to have won but they're not going to win no one ever thought they were going to win as we were talking before they were 100 one to one to win the game or some shit like that and you want me to give you credit like my goodness man come on give me a break man give me a break i feel like this is going to become a clip if the end score is like 103 more like against go for it. <laughs> prove me wrong. Like prove me wrong if they do it i'm saying do it man do it go for it man do mm. it because yeah, even do it. that's the thing like they are missing radradra and to us over but they've still got like, those guys are going to hit hard. It's like the, the biggest fear for the All Blacks in this game, other than, of course, an upset could be injuries. Like, they lost Dalton Pavali last week with a calf injury, although he's still kind of probably he, – he'd play on one leg if he had to do Dalton Pavali the way he goes. Same as Savia. Like, those boys, like – I love just Ali, They just don't care. Like, that's the yeah. thing. Adi Savia, in the game that he actually ruined his knee – like, he's still got about two or three turnovers and breakdowns after doing it. Like, Look, it's like Papua New Guineans. They run into the tackles like they don't give a shit. They just run. <laughs> they, just, they just they don't even know. They don't even think. Papua New Guineans and rugby league are the exact same. They just run and they just don't care. Um, mm. You know, and that's why I actually think that if Papua New Guinea focus on union rather than league, that'd be pretty good, to be honest with you. But obviously, they focus on league. Uh, but I think that with... Um, I think that with uh, Fiji, I think that the reason why they struggle is because they're always going to have the same style of rugby, and that's throw the ball around, and they're going to think about what they're going to do afterwards. They're going to throw the ball first, and then they're going to hope someone's there, and if someone's there, brilliant, something's going to happen from it. If no one's there, then okay, we'll try again next time. That's how Fiji play in the sevens, and that's how they win, but the sevens is obviously very different to the fifteens. Because mm. I, I also see... As well, like honestly, I uh, don't know where you rate teams um, that don't play as well, although I think that is for South African as well in terms of where to put them in terms of the, yeah, in terms of the ladder. Because that's the thing, I don't think these games that they're playing, they're international friendly, so they don't actually affect the world rankings. So it's going to be very interesting. This game affects the world, world rankings, rankings tonight though, didn't it? Uh, Surely. I don't know. The game between Georgia and South Africa, I don't think changed anything. Like the only changes. I think we're like Romania going up a few or something along no, those lines. No, the thing like, is that maybe... the Georgia and South Africa game wouldn't have had many points because Georgia is so low and obviously don't mean a lot. Mm. So that game wouldn't have affected many points. So it probably did affect it, but you just didn't see a great deal of points. Yeah, because I mean, a very close game. So does that mean that Australia get themselves a little bit further up maybe? Little sure you have you surely have to weigh in. You surely have to well who do we who is in there? What is the what are these what was that? Whoop um <laughs> World Rugby Series rankings. I wanna I wanna see because I know that we're in seventh. Um 
Mm. Well, we have got, well, you are finding those Tesla has said uh, you two could host a rugby podcast at first, maybe. Says Tesla yeah. as well. You know, I don't even maybe. know if there is many rugby podcasts, is there? Is there even many po- rugby podcasts? Not many that aren't like connected to a big like company. Like an actual kind of organization, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. Mm. We'll talk about it on Instagram or something like that. Uh, we're in seventh. Um, yeah. We are on 83.08 and Wales 83.44. So we'll jump. Uh, we should jump Wales. We should jump Wales with this win. We should. But in the same sense, it really should be taken into account in regards to their team lineup, but it probably won't be. Because mm, Wales have Argentina this weekend, I believe. So it'd be an interesting game. It'd be an interesting mm. game. People are overrating Wales, but in the same sense, congratulations, Wales. On Argentina winning twenty four to seventeen against Romania. So it's one of those well, someone, ones that someone said just now that Romania should have beaten them or something like that. I think close. someone said in the, was... in the chat, "How about Romania should have beat Argentina?" To be honest, I didn't watch that game, but I want to get. I want to look into. I was telling you before the stream started. I actually want to stream uh, a couple of these rando games this weekend um, between like no hope countries, just to see how kind of these no hope countries are, like Senegal versus Zambia and buddy Namibia versus Madagascar. Like, what a random! Oh, that'd be so random to watch. Starting, like, yeah. Yeah, that'd be just weird. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know. Mm. It's like, um, they play tonight. They play Tun- Tunisia versus Ivory Coast. Imagine the scenes. Imagine the scenes of streaming that one. No, I'm not going to stream that. It's 6 a.m. No. in the morning. Oh. Ivory Coast versus buddy <laughs> Tunisia. No, no. <laughs> I, say, I feel like it's a weird situation because you probably, even with crowds, you'd almost probably have more people watching your live stream than maybe would be at, at the, the game. stadium. Absolutely. Bit. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> Which yeah. would be a weird feeling. We've got Xavier has said, I, I, I hate Aaron Smith. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. He is cocky. Well, he is cookie. He has said as well. So um, I guess, well, it's one of those ones when you pass like that, you can be a little bit, you know, like, <laughs> and halfbacks just talk for days, don't they? He's one of the ones that I feel man, like. Man, who's that, who's that player? Um, the one who really annoys me for the All Blacks, uh, TJ Perinara. That bloke uh, grinds my gears. That guy <laughs> is honestly the, the biggest shit talker I've ever seen in my life. Holy damn. He was potentially coming to rugby league at one stage. Mm, the Roosters. Um, yeah, but obviously that didn't happen. But yeah, TJ Perinara, man, I've never, like that really annoyed me last year. He was chirping. They lost the game. They lost that game, but he was chirping a big one against the Wallabies in that game against Sydney in Sydney on the fourth game of that. that um, what's going on with the hate of the Cook Islanders? What are you talking about? <laughs> Someone hates Cook Islanders? <laughs> what? Where does Cook Islanders come up here? And how would anyone talk about Cook, Cook Islands? That's a, such a random country to bring up right now. What, what oh, no, I think it was because of the spelling of... Um... Cocky, I think it was. Oh. It ended up in uh, <laughs> K-O-O-K-Y, I think was where the transition was there. But oh, also... Like, that's so random. That's the thing. If you're going to talk the big game, you got to back it up. And something that I feel like Perinara was rubbing off on Luke Campbell for the Hurricanes a little bit. Because I remember in that game that they played up against the Brumbies, the Hurricanes scored a try and Luke Campbell was just rubbing the head of the Brumbies player, like giving him one of those for about five seconds. And yeah. then they lost the game, so that was slightly unfortunate for him. That um, at the time I was like, "This better not backfire on him, or else he's going to look like an idiot." And yeah, <laughs> no, um, said, but, yeah. what did TJ Perinara? What did he say? Oh, it was just him talking shit. It was just him doing him. You know, it's like I don't know what he yeah. said. Like it's, I wasn't on the field, as if I know what he said. <laughs> I don't know what he said. Um, but one, obviously, he was just given what we were just talking about then with the rubbing of the head and and the shoving of the players in the backs and all that type of shit. And just like it's it's cool. That's obviously what we're here for. We love that kind of stuff. But as a Wallaby, mm. we hate that. It's just like if if we saw, for example, let's go Quake Cooper. You guys would hate that shit. You guys would hate that shit if he was talking shit like that. But. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, update, guys. Uh, the Lion Sharks game has been moved as well. What's going on with that? Is that all just pandemic yeah. stuff that's going on? Yeah. So the game between the Springboks and Georgia got cancelled. Yep. And then the game now between the Sharks and the Lions says it's at Alice Park, but that might be um, all COVID 19 in the Lions camp. Lovely. That's not what you like to see before a match. We probably might not even see the, the, the South Africans play much rugby this year again. They might be, mm. honestly, depending on this pandemic, they may be wiped out of real being serious contenders if it continues this way because how are they going to train? We also saw, I will say this about France tonight as well, we also saw that they were lacking in preparation for me, which means that they also had two weeks in quarantine. Don't forget that. 
Because mm. in Australia, obviously, we have two weeks in quarantine. You can't come into the country if you don't have two weeks in quarantine. So, um, I did it. I know all about it. I was in it uh, for two weeks when I got back from from Fiji. Uh, but yeah, they would have they wouldn't have been able to train with each other for two weeks. Well, so we're in that hotel. Mm. So the thing is with this game, it says that there's five cases of members of the Lions camp, and the Sharks fixture will still be on and provided the second round of testing yields no new cases this afternoon. So they're, they're playing risky ball there in terms of Jeez. rather than just moving it and saying, right, you know, maybe it's not the best idea to be doing this now. They're like, right, we'll just cut those guys out. Should we, right? I Bye. think it's, I think it's, I, th- I thought there was something behind it for a second. I think it's because obviously they just want to kind of get out to it. I think they just want to do it. They just want to get it mm. done. They just want to, they just, like, obviously the pandemic's going to be around with us forever. Not going to lie. It's just going to straight up be with this. We're not going to get into political shit. Everyone in the chat, we're not going to start talking political <laughs> stuff, but it's going to be around with us forever. So we may as well at this point just be like, okay, <laughs> go, go, chuck the rugby on. Let's go. And we've also got, as said, how's it, Smitty? As well, welcome into the live stream. And also, we have got George Gregg and was the goat as well. Yeah, as Tesla, he absolutely was. We have got Yo from um, Abarada, and um, oh, that is true, brother. Um, thought he was talking uh, some stuff on the field as well. Are they still playing Hamish at this stage? They seem to be fine with it. So, the afternoon over there must be about 4 a.m. here in New Zealand. So, we will have to wait a couple more hours to see whether or not it will still take place. But that's the thing. It's a hard one because, like, I think – I'm not sure how many numbers the Bulls had in terms of the cases, but their game straight away was called off, like, even though we're currently a week away from it. So I feel like it's – I don't know. I'm not going to go too far into it. It's a hard one to yeah. talk about. But we have also got Capri uh, sponsoring the Wallabies as well. And I know that that's one of those ones that people are going to be saying – if the Wallabies lose, then they'll be like, they've had too much Cadbury, of course, but I don't mind a bit of Cadbury. I wasn't a big Cadbury. fan of that yeah. jersey. I wasn't a big fan of that jersey tonight, uh, to be honest with you. I thought it was very, I thought it was pretty orange for me. Uh, obviously, mm. the Wallabies are yellow and yellow and gold, well, gold and green, but in the same sense, like green and gold. Jeez, why am I saying gold and green? But yeah, it was very orange for me. I didn't really like it. I wasn't a big fan. Because that's the thing. I saw it in like the team photos as well. It is very much almost like the colour of the inside of a cream egg, I guess you could say, bringing it back uh, yeah. to Cadbury. But it's, yeah, it's not that kind of classic Wallabies gold that like you yeah, used to. It's really to, strange. Which is interesting. I, I obviously have one of those, the original Wallaby jerseys, like the one that everyone knows, the, the real basic kind of Wallabies. That's my favourite. Yeah. I don't want anything I mean, else. I don't want this shit. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy this one. I want a new All Blacks one, but the one that I've got, is a fun story behind it. It's a t-shirt kind of thing. And I got it in Bali, so it's 100% oh, not. that's absolutely not it. anything. It's, it's, <laughs> that was made out of Bali like, or something like that. It was like five bucks or maybe a little bit more. But like, that was made out of yeah. pizza paper, mate. That's what that was made out of. Yeah, and we've got uh, Tesla. George Griggan was a legend. I saw him play many times as well. There's David, David and Griggan's a real mean, um, or a mean vocal leader, um, new all the rules in the book as well. And yeah, man, how Carlos or him, Carlos Spencer as well. So that's the thing as well. Did you see that moment where it was Kuyu, how, how he kicked it downfield, Tom Wright kind of half, like I wouldn't say it was much contact, he kind of halfway slightly hit him and Kuyu did the big, like he was doing the Mexican oh, yeah. wave as he like fell down on the ground. Yeah. And I feel like it was an interesting one. I feel good for the people who turned up at Suncorp because I feel like those last few moments – for an Australian fan in the stands, like every time, like they went for the drop kick, like they showed the faces in the crowd after the cross kick, and everyone's going, "What? What? What are they doing? <laughs> what is well, the this?" The thing is, man, and I'll give you this from a from a Wallabies fan perspective, and this is from a like the people who went to the games tonight are Wallabies fans. Like people don't go to Wallabies games anymore unless you're an actual fan. It's not about going there just for the experience anymore because the Wallabies have been terrible for twenty years. Like I keep saying, yeah. So when you're a Wallabies fan, if you're going to a game, you're taking the time out of your day to probably go for a loss like you're imagining your team's going to lose if your team wins it's a positive i don't care if we're the favorites if your team wins it's a positive so when your fans are going there they're sitting there thinking we're going to find a way to screw this over because we always do and we nearly did we should have we should have lost that game france had the line out they have the line out they throw the line out they get the line out outside even if they get the ball from the line out just put it down and then throw it out they don't need to pass it down they're just going to throw it yeah. throw it out um but like yeah, we should lost that game. Is, it a, is it a penalty if you throw it out? Uh, they got a rule. 
I don't know. They've got because I know they weren't playing Super Rugby rules in terms of like when that ball was kicked into the in goal, they went for the twenty-two dropout rather than the goal line dropout, of yeah. course. But it's an interesting one because the way that they were I playing it, you would throw, think I think if you bring it down and then throw it out, it's fine. But I think if you throw it straight back out from the line out, that you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I think if you bring it down and then pass. It seemed like um, when you're in like under eights and it's like, right, everyone, this kid has to be the one who kicks the ball next, okay? We've got to give him the ball. So they were all like, yeah. right, we'll just throw it around and then take McDermott just around the side. I was like, well, all right. I, the thing I, is, yeah, like we, sh- we should have lost that game. We should have lost that game. We There's no way that France should have been losing that game because one, they're at 15-0. Two, they went up. They were up by eight points with five minutes to go or six minutes to go. Three, they had the line out. All they have to do is get that ball out, and that's done. And said they just cough it up, and that's that comes out of the experience. If they have those players like before, like we were talking about, like Anton Mac and stuff like that, then obviously they win that game. They would have won that game earlier, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. We we lose that against anyone who's actually anyone of note. Because mm, I think the only name that is actually over there, um, into or over, uh, yeah, I guess it is over there, seeing as you are, of course, in Australia, is yeah. um, I think Teddy Thomas is the only name from that list earlier who is actually, like, in that side. So imagine, like, World Cup time is going to be interesting. Like, I feel like, who are they in it? Oh, they're in it with us. <laughs> What's this? I just had the realisation for the World Cup that they are in our group. <laughs> who, France? Yeah. Oh, that's what they are, yeah. We have a pretty decent group, actually. I think we have Wales, Fiji. You're playing with Fiji again for about the yeah, sixth time. Yeah, we play – we know. We play, I, think we've got, I think we've got Wales again. We play that whole group, like, every single time. Like, it's mm. Wales and Fiji who we play, like, the last three or four World Cups in a row. Plus, we have, I think, Georgia and Uruguay. I think it's the exact same group. I think it's the – no, I think it's the exact same group from Japan. Mm. It's ridiculous. We've, we've played Wales and Fiji and Georgia, I think, the last four times in a row or three times in a row. Yeah, it's, it's, crazy. it's weird because, it, I mean, it's random, but it's still, like, weird how often the same combo like, yeah. comes up because... Well, it's because like, we're all the same tiers. So, like, we're always mm. tier one, then they're always tier two. Wales is never good enough to be tier one. Sorry, Welsh fans out there. But, like, <laughs> you know, so we always end up in that same group. Mm. And we have also got Big House, but what's good? Says so RC the boss as well. And, uh, Georgia wasn't included, Curious George said. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Arsenal boss, he's always on the channel, uh, but he has a Man United logo. So we don't talk to him because he's got a Manchester United logo. Manchester United suck. Uh, <laughs> Sammy Souza says, uh, Australian uh, Wales must be tired of having Fiji again. Well, Fiji had a good game against Australia in the World Cup. They were pretty good, but they mm. obviously just couldn't get the job done because Australia got the job they done. They were pretty the close against Wales as well, weren't they? The thing is, is that Fiji or, lost against Wales because when they the thing is Fiji probably would have beat Wales, but the thing is is that they lost to Uruguay, and then when they lost to Uruguay, that was honestly I have my good friend Frankie Lamani. Frankie Lamani is a friend of mine. He was obviously at the team, yeah, and he he <laughs> told me that that was just horrific in that dressing sheds that day. Like I remember I was in Fiji mm-hmm. at the time when that happened. And I tell you right no, it was not a good atmosphere. It was not a good atmosphere in Fiji when they lost to Uruguay. That was wild. Mm-hmm. I think it was Uruguay. I think it was Uruguay. That's the thing. I feel like Australia and Wales, it's once again going back to like Fiji versus the All Blacks, your biggest fear is probably just getting absolutely like destroyed by the Fijians in terms of that physicality battle and ending up possibly with one or two players down as well like mm. heading into those later stages. Because Fiji, they have the ability, like some of those names in their side, like they don't have them for the All Blacks game, but some of those guys, like the likes of out on the wing to a Sova, Radradra, Pete uh, yeah. Yato, I think is actually over here, isn't it? If I'm not wrong. Uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe not. Not sure, not sure. But at this stage, like I feel like, you know, give them a couple of years, they might actually also, like depending on, of course, where Wales are in terms of their form, <sighs> I want to see them make it to Fiji that, is still a team that, that, like maybe. I said before, they, they'll throw the ball before they know what they're doing with it. They'll throw mm. the ball before they know there's somebody there to catch the ball. <laughs> like, seriously, I'm not even joking. That's how they do it. That's yeah. why they win sevens, because people don't know what's happening, and there will be a player there to back them up in the sevens. Mm. Um, Smithy Toilet, the reason why, I'm, I don't know why the quality is up today. It doesn't usually happen, man. It's just for some reason tonight, my computer's just going and just 
cr- going crazy. For some reason, it's fine for me, but all of you guys, it's it's wild for. So it's not usually like this. Literally, this is the only night that's ever happened. Like we do Cubbies <laughs> games, baseball games every day. We did it today. My team's on an eleven game losing streak, um, but uh, <laughs> we 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 still haven't we 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 now have never had these problems. So I don't know what's going on tonight. It's just mm. one night thing. It's weird because last week it was actually my All Blacks versus Tonga game, and I had live stream problems as well. Like for my live stream software never had an issue with it, and it was like your internet's not working. And Dude, streaming I is the worst. Stuff. Yeah, it's like one of those ones. The worst feeling in the world is when you're sitting there and you're ready to go, and the match is about to kick off, and then someone oh. like, "Hang on, we want to show the tennis," and you're no. like. What? <laughs> Bro, the worst thing is when, I, for example, with my boxing, like I, I've decided to now just buy the boxing, yeah? But the worst thing is when, like, for example, oh. Paul Gallon fought and I'm trying to find a stream. I'm trying to find a stream and I couldn't find a stream, but I couldn't I couldn't do it. And I know that I'm getting 5,000 to 10,000 people watching live and I know that people are waiting there. Like there's people, there's about 400 people waiting for the stream to start and I can't find a stream. I'm sitting there just going through all the different things and there's nothing. There's nothing I can do. And then I go and try to buy the, buy the actual fight. It wouldn't let me buy it. So I'm just sitting there for the next half an hour while people are waiting saying, like, turn the stream on. I want to watch the fight. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, do that's the worst. When you've got people in the chat who are like, what's happening? What's the, what's happening in the game? And like, <sighs> that's the most that frustrating thing. part. Because, like, yeah, they've done it to me twice, I think, Sky, so far. Because I learn it for actually three times. Jeez, they're harsh to me. For the first one, it was the game for the Rainbow Cup South Africa, I believe it was. And they were like, it's on Sky Sports Select. Went on Sky Sports Select, and they were like, nah, just just wait. It's coming up maybe soon. And then I sat there for like 20 minutes. I actually tried to do the commentary from like looking at a score on my phone at that point, oh, which just wasn't working. No, so I was like, do that. I had to do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm that. sorry, guys, but this isn't working. And Sammy then, Susan says, Fiji have a legit team. Just need a better fly half to run the show despite progress in the forwards and set pieces. The islands will always struggle with their core. It's exactly the same with rugby league. They always struggle with their core. They have big forwards, they have good backs, they always struggle with their core. Fullback, halfback, 5'8", and hooker in rugby league. And in regards to the core and rugby union, it's always the playmakers that are actually the ones that don't really know what they're doing. Like they throw the ball around, but they don't really know. The, there's no direction. There's no direction. That's the that's the problem with the islands, and that's just Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, um, everyone, Papua New Guinea, everyone. Do you think it's possible to be able to train that habit away with the new coach or anything like not that, or do you think it would just no. stick away, like um, it would just be there? Not with Fiji. Fiji play that way. Fiji will always play that way. That's what mm. the thing is. They they try to change it in the fifteens. It won't ever work. Um, Fiji yeah. fifth. There's no structure. There's a structure in the sense that there's no structure, um, mm. and it will never be a structure because they don't want to listen. They, I, I've lived in Fiji like majority of my life. I know what Fiji's like. They think they know what they're doing. They don't really know what they're doing. You know, uh, and I'm not insulting Fiji here because I love Fiji, but it's just this it's the truth. They don't know what they're doing and that's why they can be so good at the sevens because by not knowing what you're doing, the other team doesn't know what you're doing. And that's why they score their tries all the time. But with fifteens yeah. you need to be a lot more structured and that's why you see teams like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and even England who win the World Cups because they're at least structured in their craziness. South Africa are very structured, but they're very free flowing. England are just incredibly structured. They don't really have the chance to be free flowing, and that's why they don't win World Cups. You know, the, the last time they won World Cup was 2003. New Zealand Johnny are Wilson incredibly. Sh- oh, I hate that man. <laughs> don't ever mention that guy's name ever again. And then 2003, obviously, New Zealand. You know, no, it's not 2003, but uh, New Zealand, they're very structured and very free flowing, but they're also a lot more. They're not really free flowing, but they're very structured and good at their structure. And Australia are just too much free flowing with a little less structure. They're still structured, but they've got a lot less structure. So there's those different tiers. The most structured team for me is England, but I think that's a backtrack because unfortunately they are too structured. South Africa are the perfect mix. New Zealand are there. They've got a bit more. They're more structured than South Africa and New Zealand, but their free-flowingness is very strict in what they're doing. And then, yeah, Australia are just too free-flowing, but they also have that structure. So there's those tiers, in my opinion. Disagree with me if you Mm. want. No, no, I, I agree with you there. And I feel like it's one of those ones that, like England at this stage, they seem to be going for those younger players, trying to bring them up through the ranks. Like everyone I think is looking like forward to the World Cup now in terms of like France with this such a young side. Like, and same with Australia with like the debuts and everything. I feel like everyone's trying to find that mix that will get them 
like a decent performance in the World Cup because that's the thing I remember when it felt like the World Cup was ages away. We're only like two years off at this stage. And yeah, like, we're two years off. But we, the only way I think about it, we got the Olympics this year, we got the Football World Cup next year, and then we have got the Rugby Union World Cup. So it's not that far. You know, this year will mm-hmm. go quick. We're only, we're already in yeah. July, so it's only a year and a half away, two well, two years away. But yeah, mm, it's crazy how quickly it does go. Like, that's the thing. I remember before the British and Irish Lions tour, I was like, i got plenty of time to prepare, do all this stuff. And then, yep, halfway through it at the moment, unprepared as always. But Absolutely. Just still going for it. We have got, are you using Stan from Curious George as well? I assume that is in your yeah, direction, Stan. that one. Yeah, and I, I am on I Sky Stan. Go. Does Stan it's a 30-day free trial, bro. No, it's, oh. it's fast. It's a 30-day free trial too. It's brilliant. Are you going to like, because I'm anyway, but. Yeah, I know some people like go from email to email to email kind of thing to try and keep on. <laughs> no, I'm just paying for it. I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Do it's not like go, $25 a month or something like that. Yeah, Sky Guy's got a 30-second delay from live, which does make it a little bit trickier in terms of like sometimes the people in the chat are always ahead of you. I feel like you know this as well. Like there's something. Oh no, I block like, it. I, so I do this. When... I block out the side when I when yeah. I know that we're about ten seconds out, and I know that I see try, 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 try. And I'm just like, oh, now I know there's going to be a try that happens. <laughs> it ruins it for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ruebs Black says, "What about the League World Cup? That's this year. That's at the end of this year. It'll be it'll be good, but Australia will win it like usual. It's the league's boring in the World Cup because we always win it, always. <laughs> and that's not me being cocky or arrogant. It is just we've got the only tournament in the world that's good." The NRL, yeah. the Kiwi, all the New Zealanders play in our tournament. Um, English play in their own tournament. Their tournament sucks. You know, Tongans play in our tournament. Fijians play in our tournament. Um, so that's why Australia has the best team because we have the Queensland, New South Wales. They put them all together and then it's just always a recurring theme. That's why I go for Fiji in Rugby League World Cup. Um, I don't mind if Australia wins, but in the same sense, it just gets boring. It does. It gets boring. I would yeah. love – I don't want New Zealand to win and I don't want England to win, but I would love like an yes. Islander team to win. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you guys are our direct rivals in league. That is true. Are we, I will tell you this, though. I know you go on, go on, go on. No, you go. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, you guys aren't our direct rivals. England are more rivals to us than New Zealand. Mm. See, I feel so like, like that's one your thing. rivals. Yeah, as well as like in rugby union, it's always like – if Australia are playing someone who's not New Zealand, a lot of Kiwis back Australia. But then yeah. if it's New Zealand at Australia, it's just like, it's that big rivalry. And I feel like it's going to be interesting for the Bledisloe Cup this year because, of course, last year was probably the closest that Australia have been to winning it in a little while. Like with like a couple, like you mentioned, Reese Hodge, of course. This man loves Reese Hodge for that. But mm. it's one of those ones that, it's going to be interesting. I hope to see some close matches like we saw for the rugby championship because I feel like everyone before the Tri Nations last year was like All Blacks running away with it, easy peasy. Thanks very much. We should have won. That. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was one of those ones. That we should have won that. Every side could kick a ball. Every side yes. kicks a ball once. We if he kicks one ball, we win that bloody Tri Nations. Mm. Yeah, because it finished extremely close. Smithy Toilet says South Africa is our rivals, England's Wales rivals, Australia Cup between New Zealand and England. No, 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 no. Um, England, England's main rivals are Australia. England and Australia have always had – this is it, – it's a fact because um, obviously we are Australians – historically, are from England. Um, Australia and England are the... I tell you, I can tell you right now, English prefer to beat Australians than they prefer to beat the Welsh. It's just like I absolutely would prefer to beat the English than to beat the Kiwis. The Kiwis mm. are a rival, you know. Um, all Blacks are a rival, massive rival. I want to beat you guys, but in the same sense, I would much prefer to beat England. It's beautiful. Mm. I'd love to see that every single time. Way, way more. I mean, ever since the Ashes and cricket, of course, that rivalry... It's been life because that's been going for a long time as well, hasn't it? The oh, Ashes, so I yeah. feel like it's just one yeah. of those ones. Rugby Gosh. league, rugby union, cricket, um, all these sports coincide with just Australians and English disliking the other team being better. And that's why 2003 hurt so much. But then again, we've won more World Cups than them so they can sit down in their little corner. And we've also won a lot more in cricket than them so they can sit down their little corner. And we've also won a lot more in rugby league than them so they can also sit down their little corner. But obviously football-wise, and that's why I don't want England to win this at Euros. Euros, they play tonight against Denmark in the Euros. Um, mm. I, don't want, I don't want England to win. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> and we've also got in there, Kalani has asked a good question. Uh, let's be honest, if the All Blacks were playing uh, or were to play the Kangaroos, who's winning? I think you actually slightly touched on this earlier on as well. 
in terms I, of I that. know my answer, but I'll, I'll listen to your answer first. What are they playing in? Are we playing know, rugby union or are we playing rugby league? Because union almost win league. The kangaroos win. Like you have mm. to play some kind of like hybrid, which they were talking about. They were talking about actually doing that at one stage. Well, um, it was almost super rugby AU with some of those rules that they were bringing in. Yeah, but they were actually considering those. to actually play the kangaroos, the actual kangaroos versus the mm. All Blacks in a hybrid game. This was like last year sometime. They didn't end up doing it. Um, but All Blacks would win a hybrid, I, I would believe. In the same sense, we don't know the rules. You know, if we, the rules is if it's like r- rucks and scrums, then All Blacks will kill them. But in regards to, I feel like if you were doing the sets in regards to sick tackle sets and stuff like that, the Kangaroos probably win because they're more structured in that sense. Um, mm. It's not as free flowing, and they wouldn't really understand. I don't think the All Blacks would be able to understand the stop and play the ball kind of stuff. They would just be. Yeah. It, it, it would be really difficult for them to get their free-flowing motion from sets instead of phases, and they'd only have six times to get that. So it'd be difficult, but I think in regards to um, the bodies, I'd probably say, yeah. Um, in regards to their yeah. bodies, I would say, yeah, All Blacks. Because mm, I've got some good players at the moment, the All Blacks coming through. Of course, I'd like to – it's a weird one. He's not built for it, but I feel like someone like a Will Jordan – like, I want to see him in a foot race up against one of those faster players from the NRL because, I mean, he has got pace to burn and he doesn't even look like he's trying to run. Addo Card's the fastest between the two sports. Mm, yeah, see, that's the thing. How many, well, I was going to say how many seconds, but how many Ks quicker? He's probably, like, a good at least 5Ks quicker than him, wouldn't he? Surely. I'm like, not sure, but Addo Card is incredibly fast. Chase. Like, people people kept talking about there was a chase down between Addo Car and um, Addo Car and, and Xavier Coates. And Xavier Coates caught the try, but Addo Car caught him with 40 minutes to go, but he dived too early. And then everyone was like, oh, Addo Car's not that fast. It's like, <laughs> he was he, he caught him, mate. He, he caught him, but he just mm-hmm. dived too early and it was stupid. But, How um, can Addo Car run? I'm just going to quickly. I swear I saw someone say he was in the 30Ks. Not sure, but he's, he's incredibly fast there. Uh, Lux says everyone that ain't a pom roots against England. That's brilliant. I know, but it's because it's yeah, because England. But in the same sense, yeah. Um, I you guess thirty-eight point five. Thirty-eight point five. Jeez. Gee I whiz. Follow. See, I feel like a lot of a lot of All Blacks fans seem to think that Wallowies like hate or dislike the the All Blacks, and it's like we don't. Mm. Like, I don't. Like, I, look, I'm not necessarily going to say that I want you guys to win the World Cup. I would rather any other team besides you or England. Like I like I said, or even say, I don't really want South Africa to win. But that's because you guys are our direct rivals. I would yeah. prefer anyone, but I would definitely prefer you guys to win the World Cup over England. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Curious George says, can the Wallabies win the Bledisloe Cup this year? I've been asking this my question, this this question for 20 goddamn years, Curious George. I, I don't want to ask this question because this, uh, this question is shithouse. I hate this question. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I hate that question. Your question sucks. The Wallabies win the Bledisloe Cup this year. I've been asking that question for 20 years and it sucks. I have a better question. What's if you question? could run 38.5 Ks, would you just run everywhere? Like, if you could keep that speed for a while, would you just go like, right, you may as well. i got a couple of Ks to go. i just just put on the shoes and go for it. Um, absolutely. <laughs> you may as well. You may as well. But uh, that's why you play sevens. That's why you play sevens. Can you imagine just looking out your window at your house and some guys just sprinting past at 38.5 Ks? That is ridiculous. Like, do you get a ticket in a 30K zone? Uh, you probably would. You probably would. Port Power says, at least, do you reckon Fiji would win a World Cup if they had money New Zealand have? Yes, because I think that when you see Fiji put their time, effort, and financials into a competition... They do well in, and that's the sevens, and that's why they win. They are the best team in sevens. Yes, South Africa compete with them, and yes, New Zealand do, and so do the US now, obviously. Um, England and Australia don't really. and Like, New Zealand do, and they do consistently in the same sense. I would say South Africa and Fiji are the biggest rivalry in sevens. Um, but, yeah, I think if you put the same kind of money that New Zealand put into the All Blacks as, and then put that with Fiji into the Fiji team, I think they'd be competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Because I also see, would you be interested to see Tri Nations Lions versus British and Irish Lions from Curious George? And it's, um, it's a hard one because I feel like it's it's weird. South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia, like they all have their very good players, of course, but it's that big thing of how would they kind of combine? Like I feel like we see it a little bit with Super Rugby in terms of 
like the chemistry side of it. And that's the other thing. If they did send up the best players from the three countries, I assume that is South Africa involved rather than Argentina, though. I could be wrong in that regard. I don't know what's going on with our future in the Southern Hemisphere. I don't understand. Mm. I don't know if South Africa are going to be there. I don't know if Argentina are going to be there because obviously Super Rugby with Can South Africa, obviously. Like, they're canned. Yeah. And, and so is Argentina with the hug what is. Um, so yeah. they all have gone to France. I don't really know... I don't really know the future of it, of our Tri Nations or, or whatnot if we continue down the same path. Because mm, that's the thing. I know that there's a lot of talk about maybe Japan being That'd a be possible good. I option. I want to see Japan, yeah. But it's that big thing as well as, like, I think South Africa, they locked in like a five year deal with the United Rugby Championship. That could be a wrong number, but I think because of the fact that the Rainbow Cup South Africa didn't get to take place, I think people were pretty, like, uncertain whether or not that was going to still be the deal going forward, but I think it is locked in a little bit. Tesla so, says Southern Hemisphere versus Northern the future. It's a good concept, but I don't think anyone would care. I don't think anyone would really care. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Like, no, like, I'm not insulting Tesla there, but I don't think yeah. that anyone would really kind of, like, I couldn't really care less. Like, obviously, I want mm. the Wallabies to win, and if we don't win, you know, cool story. Um, but, like, I, I don't really... It's like, I don't really care too much about the British and Irish lines because of the fact that it's not really, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not really just mm. a country. It's multiple, you know? It's it's just kind of the best, the best kind of shit. Like, um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't personally get behind Northern and Southern, but I guess it's a good concept for mm. like a kind of gimmicky concept, I guess. I think the huge one that when they go Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, I still think the biggest one that people want to see is the likes of Crusaders versus Leinster or something along those lines of like a if you're talking, matchup, but I if don't you're think talking, really If you're talking about like super rugby as in like an actual team versus a team, then yes, I get that. I understand. Mm. I think that that would be good because it's the best of the, I guess, super rugby and it's the best of the European um, Northern Hemisphere tournaments and then you put them two together, people would care. People would care about that, but I just don't think yeah. people would care about like a mixture of Southern Hemisphere teams versus a mixture of uh, Northern Hemisphere teams. I just don't think people would get behind it. I don't. I'm not having a go with the question. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good question. I think it's a good concept, but I just don't think that anyone would really care about it. I think my cat does. He's been making a little bit of noise next to me like at this stage. He likes the Crusaders as well. He was very disappointed when they lost to the Rebels. He actually, I think in that game, he jumped off my lap when there was a try to the Rebels, which is interesting. Oh. But we have also got which team uh, you got to win the ITM Cup as well, says a Rubes Black. I don't really watch I don't really watch that a great deal, so it's that that's up to you that one. Do they show it on Stan Sport normally? I don't or know. I guess I don't Sport's think actually so. very recent, isn't it? Stan Sport's very say... recent at Australian rugby, like a top only only top tier as well. Mm. I think like the two defending champs, although Hawks Bay, of course, because they won, I think they move up to the next uh division. So I feel like Tasman, like if they've got their players who they normally have. Like in that regard of some of those All Blacks players for the first couple of weeks, and then Tasman, like they've still got like the ones who didn't get selected for the All Blacks, they've still got the likes of Mark Talia, um, Lester Fine Nuku as well, a man who a lot of people wanted to see uh, in that All Blacks jersey. Although I guess they are missing Will Jordan, missing David Harvey, missing Finley Christie. I love watching Will Jordan. I've, but, I've loved watching Will Jordan for years, man. He's one of my favorite mm -hmm. players to watch. His he runs like he like it, it's a weird running style, but it looks strange, like yeah. effortless. Like he kind of sits up straight. Like he's it's as if he's like strapped some like a like rubber band to his back or something, and just kind of running like that. But it works. Like yeah, <laughs> he's got five tries. Very impressive indeed. We also got Blaze Junior. Need uh, rugby needs improvement. Um, how do you reckon they do that as well as his full power? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a question that is definitely for another day. That is a question that we can probably ask in another one because that is a long that's a long one yeah. a question that that's actually that's a good chat for podcast kind of stuff because mm -hmm. that would be pretty well in depth. There's a lot that goes into that in regards to the Australian side of things. Like All Blacks, uh, obviously I've spoken to Tetsuro with the Rangi before, um friend of mine, and we spoke about the fact that obviously he was originally meant to go to rugby league, but they didn't offer him the same amount as the All Blacks and, and the, the Maldi team and, and um, Super Rugby in New Zealand. So there's also that difference between youth rugby in Australia that can also be persuaded and just don't get the same money because they're more rugby league in Australia. There's, there's so much that gets involved there. So much. Mm. Yeah, so it could much. definitely be a lengthy uh, conversation 
as we have us got in the chat greatest Springboks fullback uh ho devilius or devilius versus andre uh gel gel bay gel i'll go devilius oh okay yep. straight away i feel like my rugby knowledge that's the thing i mentioned it on my live stream today i only actually really started getting back into rugby kind of at the start of super rugby Aotearoa 2020 before that i have probably had like a like i don't know maybe even up to five year like stint off watching yeah. which is why like at this stage i'm in like the learning process like trying to just get as much knowledge as i can like throughout these ones the thing is is that like i go through stages but i always watch rugby i always watch mm. it but i do go through especially as a wallabies fan but like i will always i will make sure that i always watch wallabies no matter what, yeah. but it's the super rugby and stuff like that that sometimes I, I take a break from, especially as an Australian fan. Like, obviously, I'm a Fiji and Drua fan. You know, I get around the Fiji and Drua um, because I've been around an active involvement with them since the National Rugby Championship when they first won. I was there. Um, I've done media involvement with them. I've always had involvement with Fiji and Drua, so I love that team. But super rugby for me, it's never really been my forte. I love the international rugby game, and I probably got yeah. back into it probably in 2000. 12 after about maybe a four year stint off but in the same sense yeah it's it can be a struggle sometimes mm, we've also got this regarding rugby but if every player were to play for uh where they were originally from like tonga and samoa etc how good would they be as well Australia, like, probably would struggle. Lengthy, like one as well almost It'd be a lengthy, that's a lengthy one because you have to go through everything because there's a lot of kiwi players as well like the, Sevu Reese is um fijian mm -hmm. isn't he He's, yep. Yeah, he's Fiji. We've got, like, we got a few. few there's a few there uh, from the islands there. <laughs> yeah. I know that yeah. people were saying for the number 10 for Tonga, they were like, he's not that great. And then I asked the question, who would you have at number 10? And then they were like, Richie Moonga. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, oh, yeah, true. Enough. Especially Moonga Tonga, is he? I think he might be a little bit, Jeez, okay. um, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah, we've got our whole backline almost is disappearing in a way. Although a few of the other players will still have a few Barrett's. Of course, this man enjoys a Barrett brother, so we'll be all yeah. right in that regard. We wouldn't be losing them, but... May as well chuck in quite a Cooper to your team, mate. We, he, he may, oh, may, really may throw him in your team because he's originally from New Zealand, isn't he? We'd rather you have mm. him. <laughs> you don't want him. <laughs> oh, man. And that guy. That guy. He's, uh, where is he now? Is he in Japan? Or is I don't he... even know where he is, man. I don't care where he is. He's, he's all over the that, dude. He was trying to play with the Broncos at one stage, but he didn't get a contract or anything like that. Ah, he tried to play yeah. with the Brisbane Broncos, but I don't think he got a contract. Uh, first picture, of course, is one without his shirt on, because that is quite for you. Um, yeah, that'll be him throwing that ball or whatever it is. Um, awesome. Tesla says no money, no money involved. If all the players play from their home countries, then most island countries will be in the top eight. Um, yeah, I would say Fiji would be pretty good because they've got like Vakatawa from France. Um, they've got... Uh, Marek Corbetti, Semi Red Raja, they've got um, Sevu Reese. You know, they've got a lot of outside backs that are pretty good. They've got a lot of outside backs, obviously. And then you've. Taniel Supo is Samoan, maybe, or Tongan? He's one of the two. Mm -hmm. He's Samoan or Tongan. I think he's Tongan. As I yeah. think his nickname may be Tongan Thor. Well, there maybe. you go. Yeah, so he's yeah. Tongan. Um, yeah, that, you can go through the whole team and you can you can look into that. Like, that's pretty hectic, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I think Fiji would be really good if they had that because they've got a lot of players in England. Who's that big player in England for the England team who plays for him? Um, he's oh. a really good player. I can't think of his name right uh, now. Which 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 position are we talking? Uh, I'm – like, it's 12 o'clock for me, man. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, my, my brain's dead, but he's, he's, a, he's a good player for him. If someone will say it in the chat, I'll know exactly straight away. Yeah, we've also got Jeffrey Foppy has said, uh, do you follow horse racing no, is Kiwi lads? Oh, to he's, he's Samoan, isn't he? I th oh, I think It so. sounds Samoan to me. It doesn't sound Fijian to me. Oh, it's not. Tui Lungi sounds more Samoan. Where are the Vunapola brothers from originally? Are they Vin from... Vunapola, I think. Vunapola, that sounds Fiji. Vunapola sounds Fijian. That's probably the ones I'm thinking about right now. Hmm. Yeah, Tuolangi uh, is definitely Samoan. Manu Tuolangi is absolutely a Samoan name. That is absolutely a Samoan name. There is no way Manu speech. is the uh, one in the chat as well. For of course, I assume that is that John Lomu or John John Lomu. 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 Uh, he would have been. Sorry. He would have absolutely been. Oh, Doc uh, a Singer. If you're a fan of Fiji and plays for, playing for England, there you go. Mm -hmm. Doc a Singer is definitely one of them. Um, we have also oh Hamish eleven of the Springboks tested positive. Positive on Tuesday, Jeez. yes. So that number, 
I think that's ramping up a little bit. So their game between them and Georgia, I believe someone mentioned was cancelled, which is, I mean, fair enough in that regard with how many they're starting to ramp up. But at this stage, there are COVID cases in the Lions camp, but they're still going ahead with the game a little bit later on by the looks of it. So we'll yeah. wait and see how that goes. But that's the thing, cancelled rather than postponed for the Springbok. So that means they'll only possibly have one match getting George into the British Ford, and Irish Lions Tongan. matches. <laughs> if George Ford is a Tongan, then I'm Japanese, mate. If George Ford is a Tongan, then I'm playing for Japan in the next World Cup. But, um, got, um, Murray All Blacks in the World Cup, your thoughts, says Rubes. I don't uh, I don't think they can. They like, can't. Just because of the fact that then, like, then do you open up the opportunity of like other teams having multiple, like, well, teams you, yeah, as well. open it up to be, yeah, obviously the Māori All Blacks, then there'd be the Indigenous Australians, and then there'd be, I guess, I, I don't know actually where everyone else, I guess, but in the same sense, yeah, mm. it would open it up to those Indigenous kind of teams. Yeah, um, I think and, at yeah, that that'd stage, be just way too much. Because I know people want to see an All Blacks B team kind of thing. I did see it was no mentioned way. quite a bit. In terms of not in the World Cup, but just in terms of maybe doing similar to what the Western Force did in terms of that tour of kind well, of... that'll be good. That'd be good to around. get a, a good hit around, yeah. Because mm. that's that'd the thing. We've got a lot of players who are missing out on the ABs as well. Mm. Like, I know a lot of... In terms of from... Mm. Did you watch much of the Super Rugby? And if you did... If you were to pick a left winger for the All Blacks, who would you have picked? Or two wingers, I guess I should say. Um, I'm really throwing you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, my, my brain is frazzled. We obviously did the baseball stream today and then we did the, the stream just before and now we're doing this stream. My brain is absolutely... I couldn't even... I can't even think of it. I can't even think of any wings right now. I can't even do it. I can't so, even struggle. The ones who missed out, I guess, uh, Jonah Nariki, Salisa Rayasi and Lester Fainanuku, I think were the three real big ones that um, people were deciding on. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's going to be a question for another day. So when that it's is not, definitely a question for another day. That is definitely. Late, no. I reckon, I reckon we've been gone for about an hour and a half, to be honest <laughs> yeah, with you. So I reckon we probably should probably should end it um, around mm. now and then obviously maybe come back after that New Zealand Fiji game on Saturday. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, I'd have to no. do that after the game because that New Zealand Fiji game is on at five o'clock my time. Finishes at seven mm. and then I'll be streaming the, I think Roosters play the Knights. Oh. Um, look, I think the Roosters play the Knights. Nice, like I don't know. Mm. There's a, it's a game. It's all on Roosters. So I have to do that. If you wanted to jump on at like 9.30, oh, that's like 11.30 your time. Jeez, I don't know. That's right. oh, I'm <laughs> always up at that time, to be fair. Like my bedtime, my bedtime, if I call it a bedtime, is now like last night I went to sleep at about 7 a.m. And there wasn't even any rugby on. It was just doing all the editing and, yeah, <laughs> a lot yep. of stuff. Yeah, but, man. yeah, nonetheless, but all right. I have it's... appreciated your time, mate. It is hugely appreciated you coming on the show first time as well. And I have to say, first time ever that a collaboration on the channel for the first time, though, yeah, has gone for an hour and a half. You know, we're yeah, going to be holding that record for a People little while. People are calling me high in the chat. People are thinking that I'm high in the chat. No, lads, I've just done three streams today. So I'm like, I'm mm. exhausted <laughs> now. <laughs> Baseball's like four and it a half, for, five Today's hours game was four hours like and 15 minutes, and we got pumped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and we that lost our a... limit. We did four hours, four hours and fifteen minutes, and we lost by I think fifteen to ten, and that was our eleventh loss in a row. So yeah, it's it's been an exhausting mm. day, man. <laughs> I've got true brother screen freezing with his eyes half open. Yeah, I have to say in advance, I am sorry because you're going to get if anyone goes through this live stream, there are some interesting times that it has frozen on your face where you have had a slightly um, <laughs> interesting look. Fair enough, <laughs> man. Regard. But, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, we can do another one of these uh, very soon as well. Like we mentioned, I Fiji reckon we should do it more regular, man, for rugby because not many people mm. do stuff like this for rugby. I reckon we could do mm. actual, like, not even ne not even necessarily live, but we can do, like, an actual podcasty kind of um, stuff yeah. that we can, can chuck on something like... Uh, I book, what's it called? Jeez, I don't even know. <laughs> I book oh, Spotify, um, Apple Spotify Apple and Music. stuff. Yeah, because there's not really any rugby stream, uh, rugby podcast that talk about world rugby stuff. I've actually looked for it, and there's not really a great deal besides the official ones. Mm. So maybe if that is something you guys are keen on, I see that Curious George is very sad that we are going to be leaving him. But 
Yeah, an hour and a half is a good effort. I feel like yeah. at the time of thinking about the review, like I felt like as soon as we started talking just before the live stream, it seemed like we had plenty that we were going to be like catching up on. And I feel like we could easily go for another hour on another day. Oh, if, if I wasn't um, so tired, we could keep going. But yeah, I'm just like, and especially especially the fact that I've got the Cubs game in the morning as well. But um, already, bro. Mm. Well, um, yeah, good chat, right. yeah. And we'll, we'll look at some, oh. getting something on Saturday night for the uh, France, uh, not the France, the Fiji and New Zealand game after the NRL game, obviously. Yeah, but nonetheless, thank you all very much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out BKR Sport. BKR Sport, damn it. Ruin the plug, I am sorry. His channel <laughs> is linked in the pinned comments, so be sure to check him out as well. Tesla has said, I'm hella keen on you two hosting Spotify streams. We will talk about it. We'll see what we can get going in the future. But yeah, nonetheless, thank you all very much for tuning in, and we will see you all in Hi, the mate. next one. Right.